So we're going to be making a social network in case you are uh, um, not yet aware. So, okay, and so here we can actually go ahead and um, uh, log in, but I'm going to go ahead and register a new user. So that's what we can also do. So um, let's say the username is going to be um, Bill, and the password is going to be um, 12345, and submit. All right, there we go. So we can now log in. Um, Chrome actually auto filled this for us. So Bill, 12345, let's uh, log in. And there we go. So now we can actually go ahead and add a friend. So if we know the friend's username, I know that I have a friend here. His name is uh, Arseni. We can now add him. And you see now in uh, my friends, Arseni shows up. Uh, we can also add another friend. So I have another friend here called Bah in the database. And we can add him as well. And there we go. All right. So essentially that is um, how we what we create. And it may seem, as always, like it's not that much. But um, there actually is a lot to this. And uh, um, while it may seem like it's all pretty simple, like it works pretty simply, there actually is a lot of things that we have to consider that won't really happen. For example, just now when we add a friend, um, what we can could have done is put the user that were, from which the friends we were getting into session, into a request. In that case, if we add a friend, then we actually lose that user and then we get an error. In our case, since we thought 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 this through and put it into session, it actually will work. So that's just an example of how, while it may seem as though it's very simple, there's usually a lot of development behind it. It's you know there's a there's an old saying that uh, the simpler an application is to use, the more development there is behind it. It's an old saying that I came up with about five seconds or so ago. So that is um something something to note. All right. Anyway, um, without further ado, then um, I'll see you when we actually create the project. Hope you enjoy it. Till soon. And we are going to be doing it in Struts 2. So personally, my view on Struts 2, um, I think it's a very nice framework. It's very good for building you know, web applications. Nevertheless, I prefer Spring, and the community clearly also prefers Spring. You can just see the amount of uh, projects that are, gonna, that are being done in Spring and the amount of projects that are being done in Struts. And um, see that Spring is generally preferred. Um, Spring has a larger ecosystem of uh, frameworks, so there's every uh, a, a lot of different things that we can do with Spring. Struts isn't quite as vast, so yeah. Nevertheless, it's a good framework, and for certain things, it's even better. Personally, I think. But um, either way, it's always good to know have a backup in case you can't use Spring for some reason or you just really don't like it. So yes, yeah, so that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. So let's go ahead and um, actually create our project. So we're going to do file. Uh, whoops, <laughs> that's the wrong thing. There we go. File, new. Um, let's do Maven project. All right. Group ID, com, uh social, network. So this, is really, this isn't really going to be, um, actually, no, let's do com, whoops, com, uh, Eduonics and then artifact ID uh, social network. There we go. So this isn't really going to be a full-fledged social network like uh, you know Facebook or anything. Um, well, I mean, what, what do I mean by full-fledged? I mean, <laughs> um, if 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 by full-fledged you thought we were going to you know create a uh, uh, um, a social network that that's going to implement the same machine learning as Facebook, then um, that's you know it's going to be very difficult to do in a two-hour tutorial. <laughs> Um, but no, we're going to create a very basic social network where you are going to be able to, you know, log in, register, and then also um, see your friends list, and then also add friend by the username. So yes, that's actually that's actually how how that's going to work. And then if you want, you can build on, you know, messaging from there and things like that. But yeah, so let's go ahead and actually start this up. So now we have a Maven Maven project. Let's actually go ahead and make it a um, web project as well. To do this, let's just go to properties. And then project facets, and then convert to faceted form, and then here just click on um, dynamic web module. There we go. And now under runtimes, we don't actually have the runtime. Let's apply and close. There we go. And now um, we should have this option here under Java EE tools. Let's generate deployment descriptor stub. There we go. So that's, that's going to generate this um, web.xml file here. 
There we go. So that, well, what we just did just now was actually create a Maven project and then convert that Maven project into a Java web project. So I'm pretty sure before we've been creating Java web projects and converting them to Maven projects. So here I just created a Java web project. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I, I, a Maven project and converted it to a Java web project. So yeah. Um, all right, there we go. So we have this uh, web.xml file now. Let's also very quickly go ahead and do under properties. Let's go to Java build. Nope, 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 nope. We're going to go to project facets. Just there. There we go. And here under runtimes, let's show all runtimes. And um, right here under dynamic web module. Huh, it's odd that it's not. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll just do that later. Never mind. Forget about that. All right, there we go. So now we have this. Um, Welcome file, let's delete. Let's keep index.jsp here. You'll see why later on. There we go. All right. So we've essentially got our um, project pretty much um, pretty much laid out. Let's go, go ahead and actually add our dependencies now that we're going to need for this project. <clears throat> all right. So we are going to need a couple of dependencies. So first of all, let's go ahead and get our struts dependencies. So to do this, let's actually go and open up a browser. All right, there we go. So we got our browser opened up, and I just uh, searched for struts to core Maven. And we immediately get this uh, Maven repository. So now we can just go ahead and um, wait for this to load. Let's take the uh, latest version. Um, let's remove the include comment. There we go. All right, so now that we got that, let's go ahead and uh, paste that in. There we go. So we got that dependency. Now let's also get our MySQL connectors and Hibernate as well. So let's do um, my MySQL, whoops, caps lock is on there. MySQL connector, there we go, latest version. And add that in. There we go, and now let's get Hibernate dependencies as well. All right, Hibernate ORM, Hibernate Core, all right, there we go. Let's add that in. All right, and then also we should get um, Hibernate Entity Manager as well, since it also. Ooh, wait a second. Yep. Let's let's put that in since if if there are any dependencies that we need that are, you know, older, Hibernate Entity Manager will will actually um. We'll cover them. All right, there we go. So now that we got that done, um, let's go ahead and actually um, create our configure our web web.xml file for the struts um, configuration. All right, and uh, to do this, um, all we're going to do is create a filter. There we go. Um, let's name it struts2. Add the filter class as um, org Apache struts to dispatcher filter and struts prepare and execute filter. There we go. Um, all right. And now let's go ahead and add filter mapping. And here we're just going to do filter name as struts2. And then the URL pattern is going to be all requests. All right, there we go. So let's go and take a look at exactly what's going on here. Um, but first of all, let's actually go to our um, Java resources, uh, libraries, Maven dependencies. And then here under struts to core, let's go ahead and go to um, struts to dot dispatcher dot filter right here. And here we can actually see our struts prepare and execute filter dot class. So this is the class that we are actually passing in to the filter here in this web dot XML file. Essentially, what we're doing here is we are offloading all of our requests that come in um, 
you know, that come into the, uh, what, what, what are they coming to the server? Um, we are essentially, they are then passed into Tomcat. Um, and then Tomcat then sees this configuration and it essentially just passes it all to struts2, um, which then handles uh, our request. Um, so this is essentially is what's configuring that. So we're just configuring it so that it passes it to that um, prepare and execute filter. Um, and that prepare and execute filter is actually the whole, well, not the whole, it's actually the struts framework that then, you know, um, you know, actually, pref you know, takes a look at the struts code that we've written and then, you know, gives back the, uh, the corresponding result to whatever we have actually written in the struts framework. So that's actually how, how that works. So let's go ahead and close this up now. And now actually in Java resources, we can do new uh, other, uh, let's do XML file. There we go. And then here, let's just do uh, struts.xml. Uh, whoops. Okay. So, all right. It's not letting us do it here. Let's do SRC main. Let's do it here. So you, can't, you can't actually do it in the um, Java resources folder. Um, XML file. All right. Let's just do struts.xml. All right. There we go. All right, so now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and actually um, uh, add in the struts mapping for the struts.xml struts file. So let me actually go ahead and get it off the internet. Uh, there we go. All right, so let me just paste this in. And there we go. All right. So this is essentially just all you're going to need to paste in if you're going to create the struts.xml file. And so now we can actually use the struts tag. So we can just do struts. All right, and there we go. So now in between this struts tag, we're actually going to have our struts configuration. All right, there we go. And uh, we could do annotation configuration in struts, but personally, I just find that it's not quite as um, sort of a, what, could, what, what is it not as? It's not quite as uh, advanced as the as spring annotation configuration. So personally, I prefer um, just XML configuration in struts. Um, but in 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 uh, in spring, definitely uh, annotation configuration is much better. In struts, I prefer XML configuration. But you know, you, it, it, if if you can understand XML configuration, understanding annotation configuration also isn't very difficult. All right. So now that we have our struts file, let's finally add one last file, and this is going to be um, new, same place. Uh, it's going to be another XML file. And this is going to be uh, hibernate dash cfg hibernate config dot xml. All right, there we go. Okay, and now here in this uh, hibernate config dot config dot xml file, we're also going to need a uh, you know the map the mapping for the tags. So let me go ahead and get off the, that off the internet as well. All right, there we go. Let's paste that in. All right, there we go. And I also, I completely forgot, I actually accidentally put a dash here. We need a, uh, a dot, not a dash here. So there we go. All right, so now that we got that done. We are essentially finished with our project skeleton. So now we can actually go ahead and add uh, all the configuration of that we're actually going to be using. But um, we'll save that for the, for the next lesson. Right now, let's talk a little bit about how ex more about how exactly this is going to work. So essentially, this, the way this is going to work is that um, when a user submits a request, it's going to take him to, uh, what, what, I mean, no, when the user first actually enters the um, enters the application, um, he's going to be prompted to log in. Um, you know, he enters his username and password. Then he's going to log in. That's going to take him to a struts action, which is going to return a view with a list of his friends. Um, already in, you know, the view, the populated. Uh, and then it's going to be a list of his friends. And on top of that, it's going to be a, uh, a bar where you could to add a friend. And he's going to go to be able to enter a friend's name. And then it's going to, if it's not already a friend, and if it's, you know, um, uh, not a friend's name, a user's, a username. Um, and if it's not already, if he's not already a friend, and if he is, you know, ex he exists in the database, then it'll add him to his friends list. So yeah, so actually, that's how that's going to work. Um, we are actually going to be configuring 
con configurating Hibernate ourselves um, as opposed to having Spring configurate. So we've already used Hibernate and we've already configured it together, but we haven't actually ever configured it from you know ourselves using um, Hibernate.config.xml. So sort of like uh, from scratch. So we've been using Spring, which configurate <coughs> it for us. And while that's great and all, um, it does help uh, to reduce the configuration. Um, you do understand less about how exactly it works, and uh, this way, you know, we just we just have a lot of different a lot of different ways of configuring it, so you know exactly configuring configuring it, so you know exactly how to do that in any scenario. But yeah, all right. So anyway, now that we've got this done, um, next time we're going to take a look at creating our very first struts action, and uh, that should be real fun. But yeah, anyway, without further ado then, um, I'll see you next time. Till soon.